let us begin the program with a prayer ya kundindu tushar har dhala ya shubra vastra vrata ya vina var dand mandi takara या श्वेत पद्मासना या ब्रह्माच्युत शंकर प्रभृति देव सदा वंदिता सामा पाटु सरस्वती भगवती निशेष जाड़िया पगा निशेष गुड आफ्टरनून ड्रीम इज नॉट दैट विच यू सी वाइल स्लीपिंग इट्स समथिंग दैट डस नॉट लेट यू स्लीप बाय डॉक्टर ए पी जे अब्दुल कला गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन प्रेजेंट योर टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू एंजॉय वंडरफुल सेशन Use and welcome the resource person of today's program, Dr. A. David Maxson Guruvanch. He is currently working as Associate Professor, Mathematics Division, School of Advanced Sciences, BIT University, Chennai. He obtained his doctoral degree from Bharatiya University, Coimbatore. His research area includes fluid dynamics, to be specific, MHD flows, hybrid nanofluid flow, past various geometries. MHD effect in blood flow and statistical analysis and optimization. He has 20 years of teaching and 10 years of uh, research experience. He has guided 14 MPhil scholars under Bharatiya University and one scholar under VIT University. At present, he is guiding three PhD scholars in the field of hybrid nanofluids. He has more than 20 research articles in Scopus and peer-reviewed journal. He is a member of editorial team of international journal of applied sciences he is also the editorial board member in sci rea journal of mechanics and sci rea journal of mathematics he has also reviewed research articles in the esteemed journal physics of fluid he is also actively involved in various administrative duties of his university in the capacity as a nat coordinator for a school and course coordinator He also acts as a question paper setter for various colleges and university. He also acted as an Indian examiner for PhD thesis under Bharatiya University. We are very fortunate to have you with us today, sir. Such an energetic, young, dynamic, and an inspiring personality to be amongst us today. On behalf of the Department of Mathematics, I extend to you a very warm welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, I would like to welcome Dr. T. Vinod Kumar, Director, School of Biological Sciences, DBT Star College Coordinator, who has contributed a lot for DBT Star College scheme. I bid a hearty welcome to you, sir. I welcome, I welcome all the faculty members of other colleges who have joined us today for this program. Welcome you all. i am extremely honored to have the chance to welcome the faculty members of the department of mathematics who stood behind the screen to make all the programs of our star college a successful one last but not the least i welcome all the students who have joined now once again i take take this opportunity to welcome you all to, the, to this program david sir thank oh thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you for your take over uh, the session sir thank okay. you thank you so much ma'am thank you sir always thank a, a pleasure uh, uh, been associated with cms college because that that is a place where i uh, learned the nuances of teaching yes, uh, so we are uh, so we are also very happy to have you back okay. again to this uh, cms family sir thank you ma'am thank you thank you so much ma'am and I, uh, at this point of time i should also thank uh, 
our uh, management uh, school dean and my division chair for allowing us to do these kind of programs uh, where we can understand we can actually visualize how the mathematical ideas when we teach to our students the so the uh, they won't even uh, they won't forget the concepts behind that so uh, as uh, we know that uh, today ma'am can i am, 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 yes, sir you're audible sir no, yes no, sir, 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 sir. Okay, okay yeah you can start sir. Yes. Okay. okay sir thank sir. you okay okay Ma'am, sir, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Okay, okay. So the the topic, which actually it's since a faculty development program, what I thought was actually people are teaching calculus. So if it is better if if, the, if you try to understand, make the student understand the visualizing effect behind that, so they will never forget the concept. So that is the main idea of this particular uh, FTP. So I have tried to uh, 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 use. Uh, MATLAB codes to visualize the idea which we are going to discuss in calculus. So if you just, uh, if you take an extra step and you try to uh, visualize this particular thing in your class, the students will never forget the idea behind the, uh, behind a particular concept. So that is the main idea of doing this. So, and uh, uh, at the outset, so, so what I have planned is, uh, we will discuss some, uh, I'm not going into the, all the definitions, Already we all know the definition because we are it's a faculty development program. So we'll just will brush the definition and we'll see how these things can be implemented in MATLAB. So how the how the codes can be implemented in MATLAB. And uh, um, for this particular uh, uh, FDP, uh, you uh, it doesn't need you you no need to have a MATLAB installed in your uh, PC or in your laptop. You can always use the MATLAB online because I'm going to use the MATLAB online. Uh, I think you can see that screen now. Uh, let me just share the screen. So uh, can you see the MATLAB online uh, uh, window? I hope you can yes, see sir. this. Yes. Okay, okay. So, I am going to use this particular uh, uh, window. That is, it's a MATLAB online I'm using. So you, you can you can give your own credentials. You can uh, open an account where a particular space will be uh, given to you, where you can uh, run the code. So I'm going to use this particular thing and I'm going to run the code side by side. What is what we are seeing in our theory part. So this is the uh, uh, format of this particular FDP. And we will we'll start with, we'll, I will start with single variable calculus. And will gradually move into the multivariable calculus. Uh, so, where the multivariable calculus is a more challenging one for the students to visualize. For students to visualize, when, when you talk of the limit, partial derivatives, uh, uh, then uh, the Taylor's expansion, okay, the level curves. So, all these are very, very, very important when you uh, uh, in in a student perspective. So, you'll try to visualize these things. So, I will start from the single variable calculus, and obviously, we know um, uh, I will start with the definition of a function uh, we know it, it is a rule uh, that corresponds uh, or, or i can say associates each object x in one set we call that set as domain and a particular uh, uh, value in the uh, next set we call the range using the function uh, defined by some function f uh, usually uh, when usually when no domain is mentioned in the problem we, are, we always stick to the largest domain of real numbers okay so what is the important thing here is the domain where the division by zero or the square root of a negative term occurs so that thing if you want to explain to the students you can always use some uh, matlab code to visualize those ideas so that the student will never forget that whenever he gets a singularity in the denominator obviously the function is not different at that particular point so so uh, as a first case i will go into the code okay uh, so this is the code so I've, I've given, uh, I've, I've taken a particular, uh, I've defined a function f that is one by x minus three. And obviously we know this is defined for x not equal to three because when x equal to three, obviously the, I'm, I'm getting a singular point at that, at, at that thing. That means the function uh, fails to exist. So what I'm trying to do, let us try to visualize this particular function. 
and in uh, 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 using some uh, uh, plots uh, actually the code which is given here, which i'm using here if possible if needed i will share this code with uh, shrija ma'am you can take from uh, ma'am but right now uh, i i might add some uh, uh, some extra lines to make the uh, figure looks good so that is not important actually if you see that clc clear all um, we are going to give this uh, default for all the programs which clears all the variables uh, created which clears the command window so you can see this is the command window so now the command window is ready for execution so if i execute this particular code anything which which is uh, which will which will come as an output will come in the command window and any graphical output a particular window will open another window because i have given figure here a figure window is going to open where you can visualize the function in the given domain in the in the natural domain that means from i'm talking about the entire uh, real line uh, apart from the point x not equal to 3 so now let me run this so actually uh, in matlab i can uh, uh, each program i can do it in a single file i can run section by section okay so let me uh, if i use this uh, uh, double uh, percentage one section will be created okay now let me run this uh, section alone okay so i am going to run this i have defined a function 1 by x minus 3 okay and i am going to see how this function behaves when x is uh, at that point x equal to 3 whether the function is defined or not okay so let me run this so i am i am going to run this section now okay so the, the, the execution starts it will take some time because i'm using the online version so the function is 1 by x minus 3 because that is what i'm going to print here is it f plot i'm just printing the func function okay and the uh, domain i have chosen from 2 to 4 you can clearly see the function is not defined at x equal to 3 but only at the neighborhood of x equal to 3 but x equal to 3 the function does not exist so okay so in this way if you visualize if you try to visualize whatever you are teaching in your class using some diagrams to the students the students will never forget that idea okay so which clearly tells that x equal to 3 is a singular point for this particular function where the function where the function is not defined okay on the other hand now let me take another example where as i mentioned the the the, the places where the function is not defined and where the i am getting a negative square root value okay so let to illustrate that i have taken another example here another program here now let me run this here also i have given the by by customary i am giving clc clear all okay and i am going to use a variable so i am going to i am going to give sims that is a symbolic variable and the same function i am going to plot but the function is 1 by square root of 9 minus x square and obviously we know that okay this uh, at uh, the, the function is defined only in the neighborhood of minus 3 to 3 not at minus 3 and 3 because if i put minus 3 also i'm uh, okay mm, i am uh, mm, i'll be getting a, a zero there yeah yeah similarity there similarly at plus 3 also i'll be getting a similarity there so obviously the function is defined in the neighborhood of minus 3 to 3 so now let me uh, run this particular uh, function and i'll see that i'm going to run this section so the, the the command window and i will be just plotting the function and here i can see so this is the this is the curve which which clearly tells it the function is not defined at minus 3 it is asymptotically to this uh, x equal to minus 3 and asymptotically to x equal to plus 3 and it's not defined at x equal to plus 3 and minus 3 so in this way you can help you can use matlab to show how the function behaves in different domains in different domains okay now once this is defined obviously the next thing which we are once i have defined a function everything then i'll be thinking of whether there is a limit for that function okay and the the mathematical idea of limits we know that okay as that x approaches a value c your f of x the function value approaches a value l and that l we call that's the limit so if if i if i speak from the real line point of view if uh, if there is a right and left hand limit to a particular function at a point then i can say and and both are same then i can say that is the limit of the function or precise mathematical meaning is given epsilon greater than 0 okay i can always find a delta such that the difference of the x to c is very very close that is it's inside that uh, delta range whereas the function value and 
the limit L which you are trying to seek where the function is going to approach that is less than epsilon. Okay, if you if, if you give this particular notation, um, uh, you, you, the student feels uh, uh, he is in a, some um, some different uh, 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 plane, but it doesn't know it doesn't clearly able to understand what is an epsilon, what is a delta, how it comes closer, all those things. So I can always use this particular uh, definition, and I can use this help of this code. I can easily show this how the function, what is the limit of a function. And we know that you might have taught in the class for a limit of a function, for a, for a, for a, for a function of the real line, you, you, you're going to find the left-hand limit, right-hand limit, both are same, and that is the limit of the function. So the same thing I'm going to find here. So in the program three, I have defined one function, one, one by one plus e power one by x. I'm trying to find the left-hand limit, right-hand limit, okay, and limit. So I'm, I'm, if my left hand and right hand limit are same and it's equal to limiting value L, then I can say there is a limit for this function. So th this is the general definition. But let us give an example or let us try to visualize this. I will, 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 I will, will try to vis uh, visualize so that students will be able to easily understand this. So now let me run this one. All these things, the figure, your plot, grid on, or, or hold on, all these things are, uh, I can say as a value added for this particular program. For to get an enhanced figure, that's it. To, to to make my figure look more attractive. Okay. So now let me run this one. So I'm going to run this. So I can clearly see that um, it, it takes some time because I'm using the uh, online. Okay, right. So if I if, if uh, let me go here and see the command window. So this is my function. I'm approaching the function, and I know I'm going to approach the function as x tending to zero. Okay. As x tends to zero, I'm going to approach the function from the left, from the right. Okay. So if I do that, I can clearly see if I approach it, the left limit is one, and the right limit is zero, and which clearly tells me that the limit is not same as x approaches zero. The limit, the right hand limit, left hand limit is not same. So which clearly you can tell the student the limit does not exist for this particular case. Okay. On the other hand, so you can see this is a diagram. See. I'm approaching x equal to zero from my right, and I'm approaching from my left, and I can see this approaches value one, but this approaches value, uh, okay? Uh, uh, as this approaches, this goes to one, this goes to zero, which clearly tells me the limit does not exist. On the other hand, I've taken one more example to illustrate the other case, that is uh, the limiting case. So here I've defined a function, x square minus 3x by x square minus 9. And I'm going to find as limit x tends to 3. So in the same way, I'm trying to find the left-hand limit. So for that, the, there is a command in MATLAB. You can do limit. You give limit, uh, mention the function. Okay. And the x, because I, I'm going to show that x goes to 3. And you can mention uh, what is the limiting point. And if you can mention left or right, you'll be getting the left-hand limit and, uh, and uh, right-hand limit. Okay, now let me run this. So here, uh, I'm trying to uh, find whether my left-hand limit and right-hand limit and limit are same. If that is the case, then I can say that is the limit of the function. Okay, so now let me run this one. I'm going to run this session. So I'll go to the command window now. So command window, I have defined the function. Okay, and my left hand limit is one by two. My right hand limit is one by two. That is as X approaches three from right and left, the value is one by two, one by two, and the limiting value is also one by two. So which you can say the limit exists. But if you if you show him the visualized part, which, which makes him more clear, see, as I'm approaching from my left and from my right, both the approaches value one by two, one by two. And this we call as the limit of a function, okay? But this this will be more challenging when I when I go for a more function of more than one variable. Obviously, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be going for f of x, x y rather than that is a plane. So in a plane, finding the limit of a function is very tricky because there are infinite number of paths to reach that particular point in space. 
it is not possible to check all the paths. So here I can easily check from my right, from my left, I can check and I can easily tell me whether the limit exists or not. Whereas in the case of function of more than one variable, it is going, it is not easy to check all the possible paths. So we have to rely on some other techniques like using the polar form or going for the sandwich theorem and so on. Okay, right. So we'll discuss that when we come to that particular point. So um, we have successfully, we have defined a function now and we have tried to find the limit of that function also. And what are the next thing I have to do? I have to check whether the, it is continuous or not. The function is continuous. So what is continuous? I'm adding one more point to the limit. That is the limiting value should also be the function value at that point. Is it? The, 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 the limiting value should also be the function value at that point. If, if that is um, achieved, then I can say f, f is continuous at C. Okay, at C as limit x tends to C, f of x equal to f of C. That is, I'm going to check the condition of limits once the limit exists. And if this limiting value is equal to the function value, then I can say it is the, the function is continuous at C. Now, the, easily you can explain this using some codes. So here, to illustrate that, I, have, I am using this code. So I'm going to find the continuity for this function. First, let me use one function where the, it is not continuous at that point, even though the limit exists, the function is not continuous at that point, okay? So I have taken a function, which is piecewise, it is defined as, as we know, as x, uh, we'll be writing, no, as x equal to one and x not equal to one, x square minus x by x square minus one, I've defined that function. I can use a, yeah, a code known as piecewise. Then I'm going to find the left-hand limit, right-hand limit as before. Then I'm going to find the limit, okay? And I'm going to check whether all these three values are the same, and it is also equal to the function value at that point. So this code addresses that particular point. That is the program five addresses that particular idea where I have chosen a function, x square minus x by x square by, by one as x equal to one, and, x, and uh, that is when x is not equal to one, um, uh, it is one, okay? So now let me run this one. So this particular function, I will run this section now. Okay, now let, let me let me go to command window and check and then come back to the figure. So this is my function which I have defined. And I can clearly see that the left-hand limit is one by two, right-hand limit is also one by two, that is equal to the limit. So I can say the function has a limit, but whether it is continuous, it is a very big question mark. Okay, why? See, as if as the, the as x tends to one from the left and right, I can clearly see there is a limit, but this piece is missing there. If I find the function value, the function value is not at that point, it is rather here. So I can clearly say, even though the limit exists for this, it is not continuous. That means this piece, this whole node that is missing from here. So if I try to bring this particular blue shaded region on this, then I can say it is continuous throughout. That means even though the right and left hand limit exist, the, the, the function value is not equal to the limiting value at that point. So now to illustrate how all the three, that is left hand limit is there, right hand limit is there, functional is also same at that point. To illustrate that, I have chosen one more example. So this example captures that it is not continuous at that point even though it has a limit. Okay, now let me take this particular example now. Okay, where in the same, same thing I have chosen x square minus four by x square minus two. Okay, so this, let us try to figure out whether there is a limit or not for this. So I'm going to run this one. Ah. Okay, see, now as I'm, uh, before that, let me go to the command window. So in the, in the command window, <laughs> sir, uh, excuse me, uh, any doubts? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, okay. So the left hand limit is four, right hand limit is also four. So obviously the limit exists for this problem. And I'm also trying to figure out whether the function value is four at that point. And I can see the function value is also four. Now we can see a continuous path starting from year to year. Okay. So I can clearly say that at 
this x equal to 2 as x x approaches 2 it has a limit and it is also continuous at that point okay so that means the 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 limiting value is also 4 the function value is also four because it is defined at x at, at x uh, equal to 2 it is 4 so clearly you can see the that's a limit and the function value is also defined at that point so i can clearly say that this particular function is continuous so if you try to visualize if you use this some type of visualization that will help the student to understand the concept more easily rather than simply giving some problems and asking them to solve it i'm not asking you to use this for all the problems once you at least you can give an idea how it looks how the particular thing will look like okay because it's not possible to do it for all the problems if you teach a particular concept you can just tell them if you always try to ask them to visualize this so visualizing nowadays a lot of softwares are available so can, that you can easily uh, use 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 it, use those softwares to show these students that you can easily visualize your concepts what you're going to teach in your class okay so this is about the uh, thing so we have gradually we have moved from uh, function we defined uh, talked about different domain and we, we we also discussed what is the limit how it can be visualized then what is the continuity okay now we are going for derivative and tangent line okay and obviously derivative you know that I, i'm going to define derivative then i'm going to talk about this applications of derivative okay and obviously we are going to define what is integration and let's talk about this application because obviously the application uh, which we are trying to seek is maxima minima is it? and we are trying to use integration to solve different types of problems where different surfaces are there, is there because once you get the idea of single integration they can easily employ it for function of more than one variable so here obviously we all know this definition is it the tangent line is a limiting portion of the secant line okay and if you see that what is f dash that the f of c plus h minus f of c by h as h tends to zero and this and if this limit exists and we can say this is the derivative this is the derivative so always i can think of yeah i'm, I'm, I'm in, in on a curve i'm going to draw a, draw a tangent at that point and that particular point where it meets the curve i'm trying to find the uh, uh, that point is my derivative so the same thing happens for more than one variable also that you're going to do it on a surface on a surface at any point i'm going to draw not a line but i'm going to cut with a plane either a plane which is a which is a constant along x axis or a y axis so that surface is cut by a plane okay so here i can see a curve i'm going to have a tangent at the point so now this thing you, you, you want to tell the students how actually this can be visualized okay so now to illustrate this so i have taken derivative and tangent line so the equation of tangent line is i have given the the, the the function as 1 by x on the process you can see different types of uh, uh, coding i have used because in differentiation i can use diff or i can uh, uh, directly uh, uh, differentiate with respect to x okay diff function is there okay so many functions i'll be using inside the code okay i will share the code if you want to explore the code you can always do it okay so first i'm i'm trying to find the slope okay slope then i'm uh, from that slope i'm trying to find the tangent line tangent line and we are going to visualize the tangent line uh, for the curve y equal to 1 by x at 2 comma 1 by 2 at 2 comma 1 by 2 okay 2 comma 1 by 2 so this is the code that addresses how i can draw a particular curve and how i can draw a tangent uh, line to uh, for, uh, on, on that curve at the point 2 comma 1 by 2 so equation tangent line to the curve y equal to 1 by x at 2 comma 1 by 2 so this is the code so now let me run this so so i'm going to run this section alone okay so my function is f of x is sorry ah. f of x is 1 by x i am finding the slope okay of it so it is minus 1 by 4 okay and that means finding the derivative and at the derivative i am going to substitute the point 2 comma 1 by 2 so that gives me the slope minus 1 by 4 okay and the the, the, the final uh, final uh, equation is y equal to 1 minus x by 4 so this is the line which you are seeking to 
visualize using our graph okay so let me go to the graph so this is the line which which you talk one by x and I'm, I'm 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 drawing a tangent at the point two comma two comma one by two that is two comma point five and at this point okay i, I can this is I, I need a tangent line so the tangent line is given as y equal to one minus x by four so that is the tangent line so we can clearly we can tell them how the tangent line is going to look okay and you can easily figure out using this uh, code okay so this is derivative of a function uh, and tangent line now let me go to the derivative of a function because i, I, I mentioned that uh, different types of uh, things you can do uh, in matlab okay so first i'm i'm i'm, I'm taking a function x power 4 plus 2x and in MATLAB, if you want to differentiate, I'm going to give diff of f. Okay, you, you no need to mention the uh, um, independent variable. Uh, obviously, if I mention f equal to x per 4 plus 2x, I'm going to automatically differentiate with respect to x. Okay, and I'm uh, once again, I'm, I'm, I'm going for the second derivative. So here I have used an, another uh, form. So in uh, subs, uh, the, sorry, the, in, uh, in the differentiated function, I'm going to substitute x equal to 2. So I'm differentiating this function f diff f and I'm storing it in df. Now I want to find the derivative at that point x equal to 2. So I'm going to use subs function. Subs means it substitutes in df wherever x is there, it will substitute by 2. So now what happens? This is the dy by dx at x equal to 2, and I'm going to figure out. So I'm going to see two curves as there. So th this particular code helps us to visualize the given curve f and i'm also going to visualize the same in the same graph i'm going to visualize its derivative also okay derivative also i'm going to visualize so that is how i've done i've i've, I've got the function f i've differentiated the function and i'm finding at a particular point what, what is the derivative then i'm trying to visualize that one f and df okay Right, so I'm going to visualize this f. f means the given function, df means its derivative. Okay, so let, let me run this one. So, wherever possible, if you're able to try to use some visualization, you can always use and you can tell them, students, this is how it looks. And you can clearly see that the given function is x power 4, which is given as a blue, a blue color line okay and i have fixed all these domains these domains are fixed by me minus one by five one by five all these things you can you can always tweak it okay according to which you can try you can do okay now i'm going to find the the, 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 the blue color function addresses the given f function in the in 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 the domain minus one by five to plus one by five i'm trying to visualize that then the red color is nothing but it's derivative the function derivative Obviously, it becomes an x cube function. So I can see this is the red color as an x cube function. So, so, so I can clearly see this is the given function f and its derivative is this in red color. So this is an easy way to visualize a given function and its derivative. Okay, uh, I'll close this. So these are some already known basic things. Um, we will use this later on. Okay, now. Application derivative is very, very, very important. Where we end use it for maxima minima. So maxima minima uh, to uh, find the maxima minima where the included. And I'm also uh, having code for the local maximum.
think david sir has left due to some uh, network issue i'll just call him and come back मैम मैम मैडम सॉरी आई आई नो वाज जस्ट टू थ्री मिनट्स मिनट्स लास्ट ओके शेयरिंग शेयरिंग मैम स्क्रीन Okay, sir. It's visible. Is is, ma'am, tell me, ma'am. Are able to see me? Sir, tell me, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma okay, ma okay, ma so, okay, so I think uh, uh, let me once again come 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 to this particular code. I will run this again. So I am trying to find the maximum minima of the given function in this particular closed interval minus one by two and two. So obviously minus one by two and two are the two point of my interest. i'm trying to find the f dash and i'm equal to zero i'm trying to find the critical point so i'll be having some points when i put f dash equal to zero so i'm going to check what happens to the function at all these points i do have four points right now when i when i when i find the derivative i'm getting another two more points so it is one uh, minus 1 by 2 1 0 and 2 so at this four points i'm going to study what happens to the function from that i'm going to figure out what is the maximum and minima okay right so this is the thing which i which we have, i was discussing before that uh, the technical issue happen now let me run this from my side okay i'm going to run this session uh, it will take some time okay right before that let us uh, analyze the command window and i was as i was discussing earlier uh, this is the given f function i have mentioned here i have given the derivative there okay then i found out the derivative if i am using df Then I'm finding the critical point. Okay, I'm I'm just going to solve it, putting equal to zero, and so right now I have four critical points, four points of my interest. Minus one by two is the end point, zero and more are the critical point, and two is main point. So I'm going to find the function at these values, and I can see the absolute maxima is one, and the absolute minima is minus four. Okay, so the same thing which I can see here. Okay, so the absolute maxima mm, happens at Uh, as i mentioned it, it it happens at 1 okay and the absolute minima it happens at minus 4 so in this way if if you try to visualize the function along with the critical points as well as the end points of your of your problem then it will be easy for them to understand how the curve behaves and where it attains maxima and minima in a given domain so this is the uh, absolute maxima minima okay now Uh, there's another example i do have okay so local extreme uh, maximum values so i'm trying to find because uh, here i'm trying to find the critical point or the point where the function fails to become zero it's, it's undefined and i'm going to figure out out of this i'm trying to figure out what will be my local maximum values okay so for the for this to illustrate this particular code i have taken x cube plus 3x 6x square minus 15x as the function so i am directly giving the function so so far i have not giving anything from my keyboard later on in the due course i am going to give some some inputs from the keyboard also 
okay so uh, um, i'm giving a function f of x okay and i'm differentiating that function usually the left hand side is a user defined one i can use anything i i have given df under, underscore dx but this side is important diff is the keyword f comma x even though if i didn't mention x automatically the differentiation happens with respect to x only now to find the critical values i have to solve this by just put equal just you put equal to zero comma with respect to x i have to solve i am giving comma x so obviously it figures finds the critical values and those critical values i'm storing in fc okay and all these commands are for plotting those values now let us see how this code is going to going to get executed uh, let me uh, run this section now i will go to my command window so my given function is x cube plus wait sorry x cube plus 6x square minus 15x i am finding the derivative of that particular fun given function and i am finding a critical value i can clearly see critical value is minus 5 1 and obviously here the uh, here the point is there is no point where f dash is un undefined okay so that is i do have I, 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 these are the two critical values so i am trying to figure out the uh, the the maxima and the minima now let us go to the figure now and you can see this talks about the local extremum value around that particular point and this one so i can clearly see 100 is my local extremum minus 8 is my local uh, sorry uh, 100 is my local maximum and this is my local minimum around that particular point okay so in this way you can easily help this code to code to uh, make them to understand the maximum because ultimate aim of this is obviously i have to end up in maxima minima how i'm maximizing and minimizing a function that is very very important okay and i have also given some uh, taylor's expansion here okay the taylor series expansion uh, first let me run this let me run this okay so the taylor series expansion helps us to uh, to approximate a function as a serious expansion i do have a function i'm trying to approximate the function by using a series expansion okay so now let me run this one okay so uh, here you can see the approximation of sin x by x up to some orders i have given okay because uh, the orders means retaining the terms okay so the first one is sin x by x the full term is in e1 the full term is taken into consideration so there is a beautiful command in matlab which you can just mention you can give the function f and just mention taylor of f comma x so the taylor's expansion of the function with respect x will be given to you now if you want to truncate up to some orders then you can always mention order comma 8 order 10 okay so now i'm trying to plot everything in a single graph so i can i can easily find the difference okay and i can clearly see that okay the the x by x can take into consideration in the in, in a given domain the chosen domain to be minus ma'am 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 can you hear me ma'am Yes, sir. okay okay because i had the same yes. sound before also so i got disconnected okay okay yes, okay yes. so now i'm using different truncation levels and i'm trying to plot the graphs you can see how the approximation differs okay when when, when i take the full term into consideration or rather going for a truncated terms and if i try to visualize this you can tell the students see how the approximation differs for a single sin x by x if I include more number of terms, how it behaves, how, how we are able to catch the entire curve. When you truncate some terms, how, we are, how the figure is going to look like. So this, this particular figure helps us to visualize how different, different uh, by retaining different, uh, term, by retaining more terms, you can clearly say that your approximation is more near to the given f of x. Okay, right. Now, 
and uh, and let me go to uh, because I, I all the things are in the slide also because i don't want to waste time switching back here and there okay so that's why uh, uh, I, I, will, I will leave the slides with ma'am we can take later so now i will directly go into the integration part so in the in integration we know the riemann sum is very very important one so there is a beautiful command in matlab where you can tell the students how if you increase the number of strips more accurate is your answer okay for example let me run this one um, i'm going to approximate this function f equal to x square using riemann sum okay here r sums there is a code in matlab known as r sums so let me run this I run this one So this is an interactive uh, code that R sums is a more interactive code. You can clearly see that if you increase the number of strips, so this is so it is from 2 to 128, it can, it can go. Uh, from 2 to 128 strips, you can, uh, this particular R sums can address. If I have two only two strips for my x square, my approximation is 3, 1. the the uh, strips are uh, rectangular strips more closer is the strips more smaller the strips more accuracy you can get in your answer so in this way you can, so this is a slider one you can increase the slider uh, back and forth and you can make sure that you are get you, you can tell them this plays a very very important role in getting the, the accurate answer for your integration problem okay so more number of strips more refined is your answer so that is what I'm trying to uh, register here. Okay. So this is one, uh, uh, this particular R sums helps us to do this. You can give any function for F. You, you no need to mention about your domain right now here. You just give R sums. It will be automatically, you can, you can, you can get a slider window where you can slide the bar at the down and you can show them how the answer is getting refined when you take more number of strips for your calculation. Okay. Now, the area between two curves, I think I will, I, I, all these things are, uh, I, I, will, I will directly, I will jump into multivariable calculus. Okay. All right. So actually here, uh, quite often in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, multivariable calculus, when I use MATLAB, I'll be always talking about mesh grid. There's a command known as mesh grid. Actually, it creates a rectangular array of data points where it, uh, if you connect this x and y it seems to be a mesh okay some mesh form will form that's why this mesh grid is important okay right now um uh, I, I will skip all this uh, multivariate calculus okay as i mentioned um uh, mathematically uh, 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 mathematically i can give a definition in the same way what we have defined for a single variable calculus but when I try to find out the limit at a particular point in space, it is not possible because we know it is not possible to check all the paths. Usually what we will do, um, I will check along x-axis, I will check what happens to the, uh, along x-axis means x is zero, is it? Uh, sorry, uh, I'm moving along x-axis into y zero. Along y-axis means x is zero. Then I'll be checking uh, along y equal to mx, I can take some parabola y equal to ax square or uh, the other way around. I can say check some five or five paths. If in all the paths, if my limit is same, then I can I, I can suspect there might be a limit to the problem. Then I have to rely on some other uh, sources to find the limit. Either I can rely on the mathematical uh, uh, definition which is given here, or I can always think of trying to figure uh, trying to convert this into a polar form and find the uh, limit, or I can always try to use some uh, other techniques like sandwich theorem and so on. Okay, so trying to visualize this limit is a challenging challenge here. Okay, so now in the same way, the continuity also, once the limit it has been properly defined, if you're able to see that limit or able to catch that limit visually, then the same way 
the, 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 the function value should also be there at that point. The idea is same, but the complexity increases here. The complexity increases here. Okay. So my here are the, the, the code is I'm starting from level curves and contour plots. So what is a level curve? Okay. So any idea what is a level curve? Okay, because when you, when you want to study the surface, it is always important to, to know how the level curves and contour plots. So suppose I can I can roughly think something like this. I will, I will wait. I will choose. Um, so what is a level curve? Suppose let us assume I do uh, there is a mountain something like this. Uh, one person is standing at a particular height. He is going around the same height. Another person is standing below, he is going around the same height. And another person is standing at the bottom, he is going on the same thing. Similarly, okay. So this is what happens if I let, let me try to press this from the top. I'm trying to press this mountain from the top. So I'll be seeing some concentric curves like this. Is it your name? Okay. So each curve talks about a particular height position. Okay. So these are called the contour plots or the level curves. So when, because actually this is a surface, this is a surface, no? So I'm in order to study surface, I'm just trying to press the surface. I'm projecting the surface on the XY plane. So uh, uh, let us assume this is X, Y, this is Z. Okay. X and Y, Z. So I'm trying to project this on this plane. Okay. So I, that means I'm just going to press this. So I'll be having some circles or, 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 or some, some level curves. So using that level curves, I can I can discuss about the uh, surface. So level curves are very, very, very important. So uh, you can always use some code to explain those level curves. Okay, so now I, I do have one code here, but I think I have to enter from the keyboard, I think. Oh no, I've given inline function. Okay, right. Okay, so let us try to visualize the level curve for this function. So what is the function? Um, the function which I've chosen is x, y, minus x cube by three okay x cube by three and i can see that here i'm i need the x dot that means i'm going for point wise multiplication that's why i'm using dot here point is multiplication of each value okay because i'm going to get an array of data points i'm going to use this and, and i'm going to get a mesh grid for mesh grid i need each i need a each and every point i'm going to match the corresponding point with the y so i'll be getting a grid grid like form so that grid like form is going to give me the surface okay so now let me run this one okay so see these are the uh, i have removed the common uh, the the option so you can see this is the mesh grid created see so how many points are created so based on this point only the surface is uh, is plotted see so many points are created based on this only the surface is going to be plotted okay so and they can see i'm, I'm uh, right now this code i'm not plotting the surface rather than i'm plotting the level curves alone or the contour plots alone okay so if you want to plot the surface i have to give surf of this is it i can plot the surface but right now that i have not given the surf here so i'm trying to visualize only the level curves so you can see the level curves for this surface x y uh, that is uh, x y minus x cube by three. So this is the level curves, and I know it is a function of more than two variables. So it is obviously it is going to be a surface in the in the in the space. Okay. So in this way you can tell them how the level curves is going to begin. Why? Because in most of the problems in uh, in fluid flow, all this all these level curves plays a very very important. Where I can clearly say that how the uh, velocity and temperature behaves at different contour or at different level curves, how it is going to vary. Okay. So, right now, uh, coming to partial derivative, as I mentioned, uh, this is a very, very important one, partial derivative. So, I have given a code here, which is going to capture us. Suppose I want to find the partial with respect to X, I'm going to choose one option. If you want to find the partial with respect to Y, I'm going to choose another option. Okay. And I can see that I'm uh, the function is I have to input the function. Oh my God, I just. Uh, the function is 
4 minus x square minus 2y square is a function which I am going to input in the command window. So I am going to find the partial derivative of this with respect to x and with respect to y at the point 1, 1. So this is very, very important because the partial derivative when you, when you talk, I'm, I'm, I'm talking with respect to surfaces there. Yeah, the plane is going to cut that surface. So at that point where the plane and the surface cuts, I can, I can trace a curve. On that curve, I'm trying to draw a tangent plane. So that is my de partial derivative at that point. There we, we um, at the curve, I'm, I'm drawing a tangent line. That is going to be my say, derivative, say, single the derivative for a single variable. Whereas here, surface is there. A plane is cutting the surface. So at the point where the plane and the surface meets, I can I can trace a curve. On that curve, I'm trying to draw a plane, the tangent plane. So at that point, I can find the derivative. The derivative is the partial derivative where one variable is held constant and another variable is moving along. Okay, right. So now let me run this code. Uh, I do take a note of it. Four minus x square. So th th this is what I'm going to give. Let me copy this, and because I have to give this in the command window. Now let me run this one. I'm going to run this section now. Obviously, it does for input in here. It takes some time. I'll run this. Ah, let, let me give some value anonymous and come out. <laughs> it has for all this. Okay, now let now uh, so enter the. Oh, I should have given some values there. Uh, something like this. First, I'll, I'll come out of this one. Okay, right. I'll, now I'll run the code. So I'm going to find the partial derivative at the point one comma one. Okay, four minus x square. This is my function. Now let me run this. So it will ask me to enter the two-dimensional function first. Enter the two-dimensional function. I'll go to the command window. Ah. So here I'm going to give four minus x square minus two star y square. That is my function. Enter the value at which you want uh, x. I want at one. One, one, one. I need. Okay. See. So this is the corresponding surface which you are trying to visualize. So four minus two y square minus x square. So if you want to rotate this, you can always always rotate this using this function. You can select and you can rotate it. Okay. All those things you can do. Okay, right. So this is the surface. So not at this. I'm, I'm in the mesh grid. See, mesh grid comes here. Right. Okay. Right. Now it asks for me to give the enter one the partial derivative with respect to x. I suppose I need uh, dou z by dou x. So let me give one. Okay. So option is one. So it finds the partial derivative with respect to x minus two x its slope. Okay, and it asks for the range of z. Let me give something like this, 0, 2, and uh, try to figure out. Ah, so these are the points created. All those things have been done. See, you can see a plane cuts this. Uh, see, a, a, a plane cuts this particular surface. OK, so now uh, to be more uh, thing, I will run, run this again. Because I, I rotated that one. Let me run this again. Run this section. Since I'm using online, it, it takes some time, so please bear with me. Okay. Okay. 
ये पेरा दे सेकेंड So now this is my function which I was talking about. I have entered the function. It, at one one I have to find one. One. Okay, Th that figure starts to come. Now I want to find the partial derivative with, with respect to. I, I will go two now. I will go two now. So this is very very important. That is what I was waiting to tell. Partial derivative is a thing. So let me give a range of zero ten something zero ten. Okay. Now let me go and see here. See this is the surface. Now we can clearly see everything clearly. I think you can see this. So now I can clearly see. I have, I have found the partial with respect to y, so I'm having a constant z plane. Sorry, x plane. This x plane is constant now. This x plane cuts the surface here. So at the trace. Suppose if, you, if I give one means, I'll be having a plane something like this, which cuts. Okay. Now we can clearly see that you can also see the tangent line. The green color line uh, is there. See the green color line. It goes to the bottom also. See this line is visible. Is it? So at this particular point, I'm finding the derivative. Similarly, I can come along and at this point, I can find the derivative. At this point, I can find the I draw a tangent by the derivative and so on. So this it's very very useful for you for you to tell how partial derivative actually works okay because that is a very big challenge for us partial usually what we will uh, um, one of our faculty used to do is when he teaches partial derivative he used to bring a potato then he used to cut that potato with knife and he used to show that so potato uh, in particular he will cut that potato with the knife he will tell this is the curve which where the knife and the potato is there and at each point, if you draw a tangent, that becomes the partial derivative. Okay, so I think I think with this I can stop. Okay, ma'am, I do have Sir, a lot of you. content here, but but uh, time is also there because it's already two thirty-four. You might be, uh, no, be going home. Okay. So, thank you so much, sir, okay. for sparing your value. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, ma'am. Ma 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 uh, yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, good evening, all. First of all, I thank our principal, Dr. H. Balakrishnan, for giving permission to conduct today's program. Next, I thank Dr. D. Shrija, HOD, and Star College Coordinator of Department of Mathematics for arranging today's program in a short span of time. Thank you, madam. Next, I thank today's resource person, Dr. A. David Maxim Guriraj, Associate Professor of Mathematics Division, School of Advanced Sciences, VAT University, Chennai. We thank for accepting our invitation in spite of your busy schedule, sir. Thank you. Thank Understanding you. calculus through MATLAB was a very wonderful session. The topics such as finding the equation of the tangent at a point, derivative as a function, applications of differentiation. program. Once again, on behalf of Department of Mathematics, I thank everyone who participated in this webinar. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, sir, David, sir. Thank you so much. For giving me an opportunity to, because I need some more time. Sorry, I just tried to excuse everything in one hour, so I might be a little bit fast. 
So just, 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 just